Next up, um, we have uh, Thomas Weber from IntelliCard. Um, Thomas uh, is the founder and CEO of IntelliCard, and uh, he originally uh, did his master in computer science at the Technische Universität Dresden. And uh, Thomas um, is going to talk how you how he uh, successfully migrated uh, to Securities HSM. So. Um, Thomas, you can share now your presentation and uh, yes, that works. And let me check, you're unmuted, are you? I cannot hear you yet. No, I um, think, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, it's good. good. Okay, thanks a lot, Robert. Um, thanks for inviting to this uh, webinar and giving me possibility to share my thoughts about um, PKI migration. <clears throat> Um, yeah, why should we migrate keys from one HSM to another? There are several reasons. Maybe uh, your previous HSM is end of life and uh, new models do not fulfill your requirements and you uh, decide to go uh, with another vendor. Or the manufacturer just have disappeared on the market uh, uh, acquired by another company, maybe this happened in the past few years, a uh, few times, or you have uh, different requ uh, uh, requirements from your regulator, maybe you want to uh, use your HSM also for EDAS signatures and um, this is not possible with your old HSM and uh, you need something which has the proper uh, certification for this, or uh, last but not least, um, a new vendor rise on the market with way more modern technologies, better agilities uh, with algorithms. So like the host of this uh, webinar, for instance, which uh, have a very interesting new uh, technologies in their models. Okay, when you just have decided that uh, you need to introduce a new HSM, what are the options you have to migrate from your old HSM, your PKI, from your old ages and to new. I mean, that's quite simple. You have just two options, at least from my point of view. And um, you can migrate your PKI uh, and generate new key pairs in the new HSM. This is the preferred way or the, the more secure way. And keep both PKI infrastructures running for a while in parallel for the to phase over everything. Or you can try to migrate keys from the old HSM to the new HSM. But by design, HSMs do not really allow a key export. It is possible if certain requirements are set, but if you set up your PPI in a proper way, I think then it's very difficult to get keys out of the PPI or of the HSM. So before we discuss the, the procedures to migrate the PKI from one HSM to another, uh, we have to consider the entities uh, which are affected by a migration. Uh, first of all, at your root CAs, they have, they have a long key lifetime of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years maybe. Uh, if, you, if you exchange your root CA uh, with a new root CA, and I'm talking about not certificate renewing, uh, but uh, certificate renewing with key renewing, uh, then, you, then all your entities within your PKI are affected. So this is a big impact on your whole PKI infrastructure. And as mentioned before, it should not be possible to easily export a key from a root CA from your HSM, from your previous HSM vendor. So issuing CAs, um, it's also um, yeah, kind of medium impact because lots of uh, certificates have to be renewed, mostly all the certificates which are issued by those issuing CAs. However, you might be have already um, used to this because issuing CAs gets renewed on a regular basis, maybe every six, seven, eight years, depending on lifetime. So you already might have processes in place to um, uh, to uh, um, renewing of your issues, yes. 
Also within your PKI infrastructure, there are, might be OCSP signing keys. Depending on the design, how you implemented your OCSP uh, service, the keys can be valid for a short time or a long time and stored in HSM. However, exchange, renewing OCSP keys in the new HSM is very low impact. Uh, there's nothing you really have to take care about because um, you just generate new PPS, new certificate, signing certificates, and then you can continue uh, the, the, the PGI operation. You might have some services for, for, for signing uh, of documents, signing of codes, something like this. This is also, um, you have to exchange this, uh, generate new key pairs and new certificates for those services. I would also say the impact is low, it's more or less, uh, it's manual work maybe. Encryption keys could be a different story depending how you use them. Usually when you generate encryption keys in the HSM, you do this to export the keys from the beginning, mostly because you use IoT devices, they might have not enough power to generate keys in the device. So you do key injection scenario, or you have a smart card and um, you have encryption certificates for email encryption on your smart card. Then you generate them in the HSM, uh, in generate and uh, transport key in, on your smart card and then uh, transfer the key it's, uh, wrapped from the HSM to the smart card and keep the backup on in the HSM because in, when your smart card um, is out of order, it needs to be replaced. You want still want to read your old emails. So here you already have keys in a way stored in the HSM in which are exported. And maybe you don't have it in HSM, maybe somewhere outside of the HSM, but encrypted with a key in the HSM. And last but not least, some authentication servers in your organization might have uh, session keys, encryption keys, authentication keys, which have short uh, lifetime. Uh, there's also no impact in terms of migration. So now, we, when we go for a migration, we have to do some planning. And the first step uh, when we migrate the PKI from HSM, from an old HSM to new HSM infrastructure is we need to prepare the infrastructure, the new infrastructure. So we have to install the new HSMs, the HSM cluster, the remote terminals. We have to set up all the processes for, for to keep it, the operation ongoing for backup, failover, and everything. And we need to test this, of course. Uh, this is uh, uh, um, uh, installation in, in parallel to the existing uh, infrastructure. The existing infrastructure still uh, remains uh, for the operation. But now we connect our existing PKI server, and we CA server, OCSP responder, to our new HSM infrastructure, or depending on your CA, uh, you have to install new PKI server. So if you use Microsoft CA, you can only have one CA per server. So if you uh, uh, install a new CA with a new HSM, then you also need a new server. Other PKI products allow you to have multiple uh, CAs on, on the same server, but it depends a bit on the infrastructure. So once you have installed the key provider, P11 libraries uh, and uh, Microsoft CNG or Java provider to the new PKI server, um, you can create a new key pairs, the new HSM for your root CAs and for your issuing CAs. And you can set up the new CAs in parallel to, to your existing PKI infrastructure. And then in the next steps, you should duplicate the, the existing certificate template, templates from your old PKI and configure the uh, copied uh, uh, certificate templates to only issue certificates from the new CAs. And in the next step, you should generate new OCSP signing keys from the, in the new HSM only, in the new HSM, but for the new and for the old CAs, because you want to continue using uh, the OCSP uh, responder to validate certificates for the old CA and also for the new CA. So you need the keys in the new HSM 
so that we they can decommission the old HSM at some point. Also, update the PKI repository with the new CA certificates and the uh, evocation lists. With PKI repository, I mean the location which you, where you point in your certificate extension in the uh, authority information access and in the uh, certificate, uh, certificate distribution point uh, extension. Uh, where you where you store your CRLs and and your uh, CA certificates. Then deploy the new trust angles. I mean the old, the certificates from your new old CAs and issuing CAs within your organization, so that every application can uh, uh, trust those certificates. And once this is up and running, you can issue test certificates from the new issuing CAs and test whether the validation of the certificate works everywhere in your organization. Then step two, you can, you have already, your infrastructure is ready, your new infrastructure is ready with new HSM. Your old infrastructure is still there, it's in, in, in operation. And now you can switch over slowly to the new infrastructure. So first, in my point of view, I would uh, issue new certificates in the first step for this for centralized PKI services, like for signing services, document server, code signing, authentication server, so that they already have a, a certificate from a new CA. And then you also make sure that those servers support uh, um, clients with certificates from the new CA. Then in the next step, switch your enrollment systems and services to from now on only enroll from the new issuing CAs. Because now the, all, the, the new infrastructure is ready, uh, you can switch the, the auto, auto enrollment systems to, to use the new CAs. Once this is done, configure the, your old CAs to only issue CRLs anymore. Do not allow them to issue any new certificates. Because at this point, uh, we switch over to the new PKI and we want to phase out the old CA, so they should no longer issue any certificates. And then trigger your clients, uh, if possible, to renew all the certificates. Depending on the level of PKI automation you have implemented within your organization, this is something you can do centralized. Uh, Maybe not 100% possible, but I think in a majority of certificates should be covered these days with uh, automatic certificate renewal. This is the moment when your new PGI goes live. So for the uh, automatic renewing um, scenarios, few ideas what how things can work with Microsoft Auto Enrollment in, in the Microsoft environment is mostly simple. Uh, you deploy your templates uh, to the success service from, from Microsoft in the Active Directory and um, the clients, they check on a regular basis for the ZEP service if there are new uh, policies available every eight hours and then they automatically, if they find a new template for them and the old template is no longer available, they will automatically enroll for a new certificate, even if the old certificate is still valid and not expired. You can also push this by uh, GPOs if you want. I would also here prefer or recommend to start with domain controllers first and uh, then with the other services. If you have MDM or lots of mobile devices using MDM, then often SCAP or NDAS is used uh, to deploy certificates or Intunes. Uh, so you can then just deploy a new configuration to all your mobile devices from your MDM. Uh, in this scenario, you would ideally have a separate configuration for the new CAs and deploy this new configuration and then your mobile devices uh, can be triggered by the MDM to enroll for the new certificates. If you have certificates on a smart card, that can be a bit painful because that's not so easy. Uh, either you have to replace the cards in the field with new certificates or with new cards with new certificates. 
Um, this costs, of course, money. Uh, if you have a modern smart card management system, then this supports uh, self-service client for personalization. Then you can trigger this remotely when the when the user is logged in with the smart card, and in the background the certificate gets renewed on uh, on the smart card. These um, scenarios here describe uh, certificates which are used by your internal um, entities. Uh, if you use key encryption for and, and signature for email uh, encryption, then the keys are outside on your control. So you don't know when your communication partner is going to use send you another email. So you don't know when they use your old certificate. So you, it's maybe already you have revoked it and you have renewed all your PGI, but you don't know what your uh, communication partner when, when the next time they use send you an email. Many email clients uh, have not really a proper uh, validation um, implemented. So um, there's there's always a risk that when emails come in from uh, from 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 other communications, but that they still use your old keys, even if you have already migrated for, for weeks or months to a new uh, to new certificates internally. What you can do here is um, you have an email encryption gateway and you keep your old email encryption key gateway connected to your old HSM. You install a new email encryption gateway, it's the same rules and the same configuration, but use the new HSM. You issue new certificates for all your employees. And uh, from this moment, they use the new keys and the new certificates to sign all outgoing emails. And when an email comes in, uh, which cannot be decrypted by the new HSM, which has only access to the, old, to the new keys, then you can implement a rule that it forwards this message to your old gateway. And this old gateway takes over the encryption and sends the unencrypted email back. Uh, to uh, to the in new gateway and then back to the internal mail server. So this way you can keep this uh, infrastructure in parallel for a while, but I think after a couple of months, a year maximum, uh, that is um, then most of the uh, communication partner should be should have received a signed email from you and then uh, use the new keys. Okay, continue now, we have the new PKI in operation. And uh, the next step that is, uh, we will hopefully have migrated um, all our clients to the new PKI and we can start to phase out our old PKI. So we have to check whether uh, there are still certificates active, maybe certificates which were issued manually they also need to be um, renewed. So for this, in our experience, um, a year maximum is is feasible. I think you, during that time, you, it would be possible to identify all those certificates, renew them, and replace these new certificates. And you should verify that there's no more active certificate uh, uh, in, in production from the old PGI. So you can now generate a last CRL uh, from, from the old issuing CS and from the old old CA and uh, make this available. And then you can back up the old slot of the HSM and the PKI and uh, decommission the CA or the old CA. The, the alternative way, will, if your old vendor of the HSM supports or offers a, a small HSM, like a USB-based HSM, you still can keep um, the slot there in, in this small HSM. And uh, if, if you think it's better to keep the old PKI for, for zero issuing, then you can use this one to switch it on every once in a couple of months uh, to issue a new CRL and uh, shut it down and just for, for this purpose. But this is the moment then your old CAs, uh, old HSM uh, ready for decommissioning and uh, you can stop paying uh, maintenance and then 
move forward to the new teens, to the new ages. And this is the scenario, the preferred scenario where you migrate your whole PKI to new ages. And in the first impression is that uh, migrating a whole PKI from and, and renewing all the keys is, is a huge project, takes years, and it's very complicated, and we will face all kinds of issues. In our experience, it was always a smooth, easy going process. We never had really big issues. And because these days, a lot of uh, uh, automation is in place for uh, certificate issuing and renewing, uh, it's not that much effort as might, uh, uh, you might think of at the beginning. It's easier at the end to do it than to try to uh, migrate keys out of the HSM. However, if, you, if this is the, the only option which works for you, um, you can try to, import, uh, to export the keys and import to the new HSM. In general, this is an approach which is um, possible because key export is not something which is completely impossible or prevented by an HSM because it's something uh, which is used for other uh, purposes, in, in, for instance, I already mentioned you have key uh, uh, devices in, in a factory and you need to uh, deploy keys inside the devices in the IoT devices, but the devices have not enough power for key generation for strong keys, they have not a good uh, random number generator. So then you generate the keys in the, inside your ages and make them exportable and then inject them into the devices. It's also something we usually do when we have uh, encryption keys on smart cards, we, we generate them in the H7 and backups them. Also, the most vendors these days offer bring your own key solutions to migrate the keys from, from your HSM on premise to the HSM in the cloud from, from the vendors. So they have some kind of um, API which allows them to, uh, to uh, export keys in a secure way outside of the HSM uh, into the cloud. Or uh, like now we are in, uh, talking about in this webinar is you want to migrate to new web HSM. But for PKI purposes, mostly the keys are so protected that it's not something which goes out of the box because uh, you have to set a lot of things uh, you have to fulfill a lot of requirements to, to, for the, to, to make keys exportable. So yeah, the configuration of, the, of your old HSM should allow this. And uh, it should allow that keys can be exported and it should also allow that keys can be imported. And of course, if you want to do it in a secure way, it should allow that you can uh, wrap and unwrap keys and import wrapping keys into the HSM. Uh, from uh, from the um, auditing perspective, um, most of the HSM, if they allow key export, then they have a certain procedure for this. And then often or it only works in a document procedure and only from the H, from one HSM to another HSM from the same vendor. Uh, but exporting to a different vendor is something most HSMs uh, do not really allow. So you have to not only co uh, configure your hard, uh, HSM in a, I would say, in a not so secure way, a really insecure way. You also have have to set the key flex when you on on the generation time of your keys in an insecure way. So you have to generate the keys as exportable, or you, at least you have to allow this. So some modules will never allow a private key to be exported. As they just do not allow this. Some allow this if a certain key flex are set and some modules uh, have some um, um, procedures to export keys using backup or, or recovery or disaster recovery uh, procedures. But anyway, migrating keys between different HSM is always insecure. And uh, if you start with a new PKI, you should always start in a, with generating new keys from 
inside the new HSM, use their really good random number generator and all the protection features they have, like uh, Melanie mentioned before, like the uh, root key element or the, the key attestation features of these of yours as HSM. I don't want to go too deep what other end vendors offer in general and how you can try to export keys. Some vendors at least have some administrator API, which allows to change uh, some property files for keys afterwards. So even if PKCS 11 uh, key flags are set for it's not exportable or it's not extractable or sensitive, uh, you can, this API can be used to override uh, key attributes, but this is not possible through the standard APIs. This is something vendor specific APIs and the vendor can offer you to help you with the key migration. Um, uh, as a professional service, but this is not something they, they, they really like. That's why um, yeah, it's very difficult. I quickly want to cover a few scenarios if you if you are going for key export. Um, first scenario uh, wraps the key uh, with, uh, with the AES key, which was encrypted with a public key from, uh, from the new HSM. If this is not possible, you have to generate the AES key and clear this outside and import it. And the least secure scenario is you export the key in the P12. So when you have your source uh, HSM and your target HSM, in the first step you generate the uh, RSA key pair in the target HSM and you export the public key from the target HSM and import it to your uh, source HSM. And inside the source HSM, you generate an AES key and you wrap it with the public key from the target HSM. Then you export this key and import it this key into the new the target HSM. Now you have the shared secret, the AS key, which is then you used to encrypt all your key material from the uh, source AS, HSM to the target HSM. So now both HSM have, uh, have uh, finished a key um, ceremony uh, exchange of keys in a, in a more or less secure way. Now you can encrypt all the keys you want to export with the AES key and then export uh, the web key uh, from, uh, from the HSM and then import these keys into your new HSM. So this is the safe way to do a key migration if it's supported by your HSM. Not all HSMs support uh, wrapping and unwrapping of a uh, AES keys. And then you have to do the same procedure again, but uh, you cannot protect the AES key, so you generate them outside, import them to the HSM in clear text, and then do the whole procedure again. Export the key material with web with this AES key and import it to the new HSM. And last but not least, uh, if also that is not possible, or if your target HSM uh, refuses to import the key, um, then you can use, you can try to export the key in a P12 file. This is very insecure because the P12 file is only protected by a password. And then you can import the key uh, from the P12 into the HSM. This scenario is insecure. The reason why I mention is that Exporting keys from one HSM to the new HSM, even if it works, does not automatically mean your, your PKI application will then work with the key in the new target HSM. Some PKIs, some CAs have uh, a key flex, which are not really standard. So you need tools from the PKI vendor for, for generating or importing the keys. And then a P12 is a way to use a, a, a PKI software to import a CA or import a key store into the HSM. And then this PKI software sets all the required key attributes and features which are necessary that the PKI works. So Microsoft CA, for instance, uh, is, has a lot of uh, key attributes which are not really standard. And then it, it just a plain key import and export 
you miss uh, all the key uh, flags from the old age. So. Yeah, uh, so key migration is, is, is technically possible if the HSM supports this, but uh, the, the, the target application also has to target to the new HSM and uh, you might have to implement a few hacks to get the PKI then working with this, with this key which you have migrated in the, in the new HSM. This, the more secure way is to use the new keys from the new HSM do a, more effort, do a bit more effort to export this uh, to generate all the keys, but um, uh, it's I think it's worth. However, we have written a small tool which can migrate keys. Uh, mostly, we have learned a lot about what's possible with HSM and what's not possible. So our lessons learned are key migration from keys. Mm. It's sometimes easier to, to really set up everything from scratch. Yeah. The issue is not all keys can be exported. That is something you have to consider from the beginning. Uh, not all mechanisms uh, would work uh, with your new PKI and the new ages. And, and, and you might run into trouble later with your PKI application for the new ages. So when when it comes to PKI migration to new HSM, our recommendation is go with new keys in a new, brand new HSM, use all the features you have there uh, to set up um, the, the proper new PKI. And then use a phase over period of something like a year, and then you can phase out your old PKI infrastructure, shut down everything, and your new PKI with the new HSM takes over. Okay, thank you very much.